A few years ago, VR took the world by storm. In 2016, headsets like the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift were making headlines everywhere, and by 2020, it seemed like everyone had an Oculus Quest 2. We were sold a dream that VR was going to absolutely change our day-to-day -day life. Yet in 2025, VR feels less relevant than it did over a decade ago. What exactly happened to VR? If you clicked on this video, chances are you own or have owned a VR headset. And unless if you are a dedicated enthusiast it probably spends way too much time on the charger collecting dust. I absolutely loved my Quest 2 when I got it in 2020, and I pre-ordered the Quest 3 as soon as I heard about it. But despite all of my excitement, I feel like I have not used these things near as much as I should have. The first time putting on a VR headset was absolutely incredible. It was little things, like setting up my very first boundary, or interacting with floating menus for the very first time. It was just really cool. And experiencing immersive games like Beat Saber and Super Hot was just an unmatched feeling. Many people today still blame VR's lack of success on things like price point. But today, you can get a used Quest 3S for like 200 bucks and a brand new one for 300 bucks. This is right on par or even cheaper than a lot of consoles nowadays. So if it's not price and a bunch of people have them, then what is it? I believe there's four main reasons for why VR has not completely revolutionized the world. Commitment, comfort, games, and a clear vision. Let's talk about commitment. There's an invisible wall you have to break through every single time you want to play VR. You have to have a lot of room to play in without worrying about hitting something. I know friends who have literally destroyed a light bulb while playing VR before, so you need to make sure you have enough space. Which means we have to go into larger, more common areas of our house or apartment in order to play. And the thing about common areas is there's a bunch of people around. Usually gaming with people around isn't any big deal, but when you're flailing your arms around in the middle of your living room, you want to make sure that you're out of the way, but then it can also kind of make you feel like an idiot sometimes. Another main point of friction has to be comfort. Headsets have gotten a lot better, I mean the transition from the Quest 2 to the Quest 3 was huge, but it still does kind of feel like you just have a brick strapped to your face. Not only that, but a bunch of people I know also suffer from very bad motion sickness in VR, especially with specific titles. I'm very lucky that I didn't get motion sickness, but I know I used to get really bad headaches about 20 or 30 minutes in when I first started playing, and after doing research online, really the only solution I could find to this was just to keep on playing and build up that resistance to it. I love VR and I wanted to enjoy it, so it wasn't a huge problem for me. But for a lot of people who just want to casually game, I don't think they want to set timers and have to deal with a headache for the rest of the day just to be able to play Fruit Ninja. Also speaking on timers, all of these headsets have a very short built-in timer called a battery. Battery life out of the box for standalone headsets is just really not that great. Sure, you can get one of these battery head straps like I have, or you can constantly run a cable to your headset, but once again, this is just more and more barriers that you're having to overcome in order to have a great VR experience. I mean, this technology is still relatively new, and so I know I don't mind taking a little extra time to set up my headset to make sure I have the best experience, but sometimes even once you have everything set up, having an enjoyable time can still be a struggle due to the most important part of VR, which is the games. VR headsets wouldn't be anything without the games, especially for us everyday consumers. The concept of being transported to another world, Sword Art Online style, is something that every gamer has dreamed of. And there are a few absolutely legendary VR titles that really put you in that immersion and give you these unmatched experiences. But after a month or so of consistent VR usage, you'll struggle to find more of these. It's not that there's a lack of games on VR, not at all. It's that there's a lack of games leveraging what VR is so good at. Despite what consumers and developers think when they pick up their first VR headset, VR is full of an insane amount of limitations, both on the consumer and developer side. The biggest of these limitations as far as game design is concerned, in my opinion, has to be movement. Unless if the player has one of those crazy VR treadmills or is playing in a literal warehouse, they have to stay in one place. Let's take a look at Beat Saber, Super Hot, I Expect You to Die. What do all three of these games have in common? You don't move. I mean, in a devlog from the I Expect You to Die devs, they literally talked about how when they were concepting what game they wanted to make, they had to build it around not being able to move. VR doesn't want to be about running. The motion sickness is a problem, but what VR is really good at is manipulating things with your hands. The game had to be fully playable while standing still, all because they didn't want to break that immersion. And now the first thing that the game tells you when you boot it up is that this game is meant to be played sitting down. And in the original PC port of Superhot, you move around all the time. But once they brought it over into VR, every single level is meant to be played standing still. 
You can move around a little bit to dodge bullets and things if you need to, but your feet don't have to leave that small boundary. Every single thing you do in the game is caused by you, the player. My biggest pet peeve for any VR game is when I go in and the first thing they want me to do is move with a joystick. It almost always takes me out of that immersion. It takes what could feel like an awesome immersive experience into just a glorified PC game with worse graphics. And the thing is, you don't even have to have the player stand still, you just need to provide good context. A great example of this is games like Gorilla Tag. You have to physically move your arms around in order to move. And in games like Echo VR, Rest Its Soul, you're in zero gravity and move around with rocket boosters and by grabbing and throwing yourself off of walls. I just hate that there's so many games out there that are not trying to come up with creative solutions to this, especially when things like VR treadmills and brain computer interfaces are either nowhere near the horizon or way too expensive for your average consumer. And I think we would see a lot more of this if the main supporters of VR had more of a clear vision on where they want to go. I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. Right now, VR just has no clear vision on where it wants to be with its consumers. There's a ton of great examples on how VR is changing the world for things like simulation and medicine, but the vision for everyday consumers just feels so fragmented right now. On one hand, we have Apple making high-end lifestyle headsets that aren't meant for things like gaming and are more marketed towards things like productivity. And then we have Meta who has literally put in millions of dollars to help support game developers and get stuff on their platform, but now is so focused on creating their metaverse that has extremely mixed reviews. Finding support as a VR dev is at an all-time low, and I've talked to a few developers that have been in the VR industry for a good bit, and they're saying once they finish up this game, they're done with VR for a while. They're moving back into PC or console. I was at GDC a few months ago, and I went to the meta booth there, and I talked to a bunch of developers that were hanging around, and a bunch of employees from meta. Based on those conversations, it's very clear that meta's top priority right now isn't to bring new games to the platform. It's all about trying to convert all of their users into Horizon Worlds fans. They even announced that they're giving away $50 million to developers who are willing to make Horizon Worlds experiences, which has been a pretty controversial move, especially when you consider that they are cutting off a bunch of VR studios, including games like Echo Arena, which was one of the best games on the entire platform. Don't worry, VR is not going anywhere. It is an insanely volatile industry, but unfortunately, I predict that we're probably five to 10 years away from the next big VR revolution. All of the tech companies have shifted all of their focus into AI right now, and so for us VR consumers, we're just gonna have to wait a little bit. I'm also gonna be starting a series on failed revolutionizing in gaming. If you wanna check that out, you can click right here. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as it helps me out a ton. Anywho, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.